Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here, and I am answering every exam question that's ever been asked on probability. And in particular, I'm focusing on this bit down here, which is where it is asked with algebra. Now, if you do want to use this document, it is linked in the description. These are huge questions. This is six marks. So this is probably, I don't think I've come across a six marker before. And this is also in a non-calculated paper, and it's going to be so much algebra with this. It says there are only green pens and blue pens in a box. There are three more blue than green in the box, and there are more than 12 pens in the box. Simon is going to take at random two pens from the box, and the probability that he does this of the same colour is 27 over 55. Work out the number of green pens in the box. So I'm going to call the number of green pens, I'm going to call the number of green pens X, and it says that there are three more blue pens than green pens, so that's going to be X plus three. So the total number of pens in this box is all of these bits added together, which is just 2x plus 3. So I'm going to work out the probability of getting them of the same colour. Well, he could either get a green and a green, and then I'm going to add to that the probability of blue and blue, and I know that's going to be equal to 27 over 55. So green and green, well, it's going to be x out of the total number, which is 2x plus 3. And then after one of them has been taken, there's no longer 2x plus 3, there's only 2x plus 2 because one of the greens has been removed. And the probability of getting a green is no longer going to be x, it's going to be 1 less than x, so it's going to be x minus 1. Now for blue, there's still a total of 2x plus 3 in the second scenario, and blue is x plus 3. We're going to reduce the number of pens by 1 so that it becomes 2x plus 2. And we're going to reduce the number of blues by 1 so it becomes x plus 2. And that's going to be equal to 27 over 55. So I'm going to have for this first part, there's going to be an x, x minus 1. And then they're going to have a common denominator already when these bits get multiplied. So I'm going to just draw out a long line here. They're going to have a common denominator of 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 2. Being added to it are these two being multiplied, and obviously they need to be put with brackets like this so that we get x plus 3 brackets x plus 2, and that is all equal to 27 over 55. So I'm actually going to do a little bit of expanding first of all. So for the numerator, I'm going to have my x squared minus x, and then for these double brackets that I'm talking about here, you're going to do this as x squared. There's going to be a 3x and a 2x, so that's a 5x, and there's going to be a 6. And then for the denominator that we've got down here, we have 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. We then have a 6x and a 4x, which is 10x. And then we have a 2 times 3, which is a 6. And that is all equal to 27 over 55. So I am now going to take all of this, and I'm going to try and simplify it up here. So let's see if I can I tell you what I might need to do. I might need to shrink this down so that I have a little bit more space because this is a mega kind of question and that little bit there let's just put it back where it belongs okay so the numerator of the left hand side is going to be a 2x squared we then have 5x minus x which is 4x and we have plus 6 and that is all being divided by our 4x squared plus 10x plus 6 and that is equal to 27 over 55. So I'm now going to put the 4x squared bracket all going up there and the 55 all going up there so that we end up with 55 brackets 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 is equal to 27 4x squared plus 10x plus 6. Now it's non-calculated, so they also want you to do all of these multiplications. Um, I'm going to do some of these ones straight away. So 55 times 2, that is going to be 110x squared. 55 times 4, well it's going to be double that, 220x. And 55 times 6, 50 times 6 is 300, and 5 times 6 is 30, so it's 330. Now 27 times 4, that's going to be 80, it's going to be 108 x squared. 27 times 10 is 270x. Obviously you could do some working out over here if you needed to. And 27 times 6, that's going to be 120 plus 42, which is 162. So you probably will need to do some extra working out there. Now I'm going to make it a quadratic all on one side. So I'll do the 110x squared, take away the 108x squared, which is 2x squared. 220x, take away 270x, is minus 50x. 
and then 330 take away 162. I think this is probably going to be the only one I want to make sure that I do correct. So I get 10 take away 2 is 8, and then 12 take away 6 is 6, and 2 take away 1 is 1. So it's minus, oh sorry, it is plus 168, and that is equal to 0. Now you'll notice here that actually all of these things can be divided by 2, including the 0. So I'm going to do that to make the factorising easier. So that's going to be an x squared minus 25x, and then half of 168 is 84. So because I know that it's going to be a whole number for the green pens, I think this is going to be something I can factorise. So I'm just going to think about the number 84, and I need to think of two numbers that multiply to 84 and add to minus 25. So that means it's a positive, they're both going to have to be negatives. So I could have minus 1 and minus 84. I don't think that's going to work. I could have minus 2 and minus 42. No, that won't work. I could have minus 4 and minus 21. Yep, yeah, that pair is going to work here and here because they add to minus 25, but they multiply to 84, which means that we have x minus 4 and we have x minus 21. So our solutions for the number of green pens is that x could be equal to 4 or x could be equal to 21. But it does say that there are more than 12 pens in the box. So if there was 4 for green, there would be 7 for blue, and 4 and 7 doesn't add up to more than 12. So we can't have this one, and the reason we can't have this one is there are more than 12 in the box. There are more than 12. So that one is not going to be an answer, which means that the number of green pens are 21 green pens is our answer for this one. Let's very much hope we've got this one right for these six crazy marks. So we do have 21, and we don't actually even have to explain that bit there, but this was all the algebra that kind of led us to this one. Okay, this one, it says, there are only red counters and green counters in a bag. A counter is taken at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is green is 3 over 7, and the counter is put back in the bag. Two more red counters and three more green counters are put in the bag. A counter is taken at random from the bag, and the probability that it is green is now 6 over 13. Find the number of red counters and the number of green counters that were in the bag originally. Okay, so to begin with, we know that there are R for red. This is our original setup, and that there are G for green. And so in total, there are R plus G. So the probability that the counter is green is 3 sevenths. Well, that would be green out of all of the total um, all of the counters, which is r plus g, that is equal to 3 over 7. So I'm going to just set something up with some algebra here and see what happens. I'm going to multiply up the 7 to go with the g and the r plus g to go with the 3. So I get that 7g equals 3 brackets r plus g. So 7g is equal to 3r plus 3g. And I'm going to just subtract this 3g from this side so that I get 4g equals 3r, and I'll see what can happen next. Now I'm going to have a think about the new situation. So this was my red and this was my green. I'm now going to think about how many red there are, how many green there are, and how many there are in total. So it says two more red counters. So there's now r plus 2, three more green counters. So there's now g plus 3, which means the total is r plus g plus 5. And the probability that the counter being taken is 6 over 13 now. So I can say for it being green is going to be the green counters, which is g plus 3, over the total, which is r plus g plus 5. That is now equal to 6 over 13. So we'll do the same thing as before. That multiplies up here. The 13 multiplies up here, which gives us 13 brackets g plus 3 equals 6 brackets r plus g plus 5. And we're going to have two equations we'll solve simultaneously. Expanding the brackets, 13g plus 39 equals 6r plus 6g plus 30. Now the issue is that I've got a mixture of g and r here. So if I get rid of this r, I have it all in terms of g. And I can do that quite nicely because if 3r is equal to 4g, then 6r is equal to 8g. And I can use that fact and put it in here. So 13g plus 39 is equal to 6r, which is 8g, plus 6g plus 30. So 13g plus 39 8g plus 6g is 14g, and then I'm going to subtract the 13g, so 39 equals g plus 30, 
and that means that g is equal to 9, which means the number of red counters, if I go back to this part over here, I might need to now work that out. If g is equal to 9, let's use this equation that we have here. 4g equals 3r. So I can do 4 times 9 equals 3r. So 36 equals 3r. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So it means the number of red counters is 12. So there are 9 green counters and 12 red counters. And they would accept it with g and r because it's kind of obvious what we're talking about. So let's hope we've got this one right. There are 9 green counters and 12 red counters for this one. A pretty challenging question. OK, let's have a look at this one here, which is another one with algebra. So this is from the 2020 paper in its calculator. It says there are only red sweets and yellow sweets in a bag. There are n red sweets in a bag and there are eight yellow sweets in the bag. Sajid is going to take it around in the sweet from the bag and eat it. He says that the probability of the sweet will be red is 7 tenths. Show why the probability cannot be 7 tenths. OK, so I think we want to investigate some stuff to do with the probabilities we've got at the top here. We've said that for red, there are going to be n sweets, and that for yellow, there are 8 sweets, which means in total, we have n plus 8. So he is suggesting that the probability of red is 7 tenths. Well, red would be n over n plus 8, and he says that this is 7 tenths. So we're going to solve this equation and see kind of what goes wrong. The n over 8, that's going to multiply up to go with the 7. The 10 is going to multiply up to go with the n. So that when I get this equation, I tell you what, I might actually do this up here so that I've got some more space. I'm going to multiply the 10 up so that I get 10n. And then when I multiply the 7, sorry, the n plus 8 up, I get 7 brackets n plus 8. So 10n is equal to 7n plus 56. If I subtract the 7n, I get 3n equals 56, and n is equal to 56 over 3. Now, that's not going to be a whole number. If I do 56 over 3, I get 18.6 recurring. I get 18.666, but n must be a whole number. But n must be a whole number. So the probability can't be 7 tenths. So the probability cannot be 7 tenths. OK, now let's have a look at part B of the question. It says, after Sajid has taken the first sweet from the bag and eaten it, he's going to take at random the second sweet from the bag. Given that the probability that both sweets he takes will be red is 3 fifths, work out the number of red sweets in the bag. So I'm going to have to do the probability of red, and I'm going to have to multiply it by red again. But remember, he's eaten it, so there's going to be one less each time. So the probability of red to begin with is n over n plus 8. I'm going to zoom in and actually make my pen a little bit thinner because this question has got a lot of working going in on this one. So I'm going to say that the probability of red is going to be n out of n plus 8. And the next time that he picks a red, there's not going to be n plus 8 anymore. There's going to be n plus 7. And there's going to be one less red, which is n minus 1. And that probability is going to be 3 fifths. So when I multiply the numerators, I have my n brackets n minus 1. On the bottom, I'm going to have my n plus 8, n plus 7. And that is equal to 3 fifths. So continuing with this up here, if I expand these brackets, I get n squared minus n. And on the denominator, I get n squared. We then have 8n and 7n, which is 15n. And 7 times 8 is 56. And that is equal to 3 fifths. So like before, this denominator is going to go up there. This 5 is going to go up there, which leaves us with 5 brackets n squared minus n equals 3 brackets n squared plus 15n plus 56. Now expanding these brackets, you get 5n squared minus 5n equals 3n squared plus 45n. And 3 times 56, that is 168. Obviously, it's a calculator paper, so you can check that as well. Now, because it's a quadratic, I want it all to be on one side being equal to 0. So I'm going to have my equals to 0 bit on the right-hand side. Well, I've got the 5n squared minus 3n squared. That is going to be 2n squared. I then have minus 5n minus 45n. That is minus 50n. And then I'm just going to put that 168. I'm going to just subtract it so that I get minus 168. Now, you'll notice here everything can be divided by 2, including the 0, so that we get n squared minus 25n 
minus 84 is equal to 0. So all we need to do now is do some factorising. I need to think of numbers that multiply to negative 84. Well, we'll play around with the positive and negative in a second. Um, 1 goes into 84, so we could have 1 and 84, but I can't think of a combo that would get me to minus 25. We could have 2 and 42, but no combination of that is going to work. Let's check 3. I think 3 is going to go into 84. So if I see how many times 3 goes into 84, 3 goes into 8, it goes twice, remainder 2, and 3 goes into 24, 8 times. So we've got 3 and 28. Yep, these two I can make negative 25. If I make that one a negative and that one a positive, these are going to be the ones that I want to use. So I can actually factorise this. It's going to be an n minus 28, and it's going to be an n plus 3 is equal to 0, which tells me either n is equal to 28 or n is equal to minus 3. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to have a negative one in this case, which means the answer to this question, the number of red sweets in the bag, is there are 28 red sweets, because the red ones is what we said was n at the very beginning of the question up here. So we'll double check if we've got this right. I had to go to that thin pen so that I could fit this all in. So we do have the 28 and we have shown that it doesn't work. They've got this idea of n suites being 56 over 3 and that just doesn't work. You can't have it as a non-integer. Okay, I think this is the last one on this part, and this is an especially strange one. Never seen anything like this before. It says, Pat throws a fair coin n times. Find an expression in terms of n for the probability that Pat gets at least one head and at least one tail. Well, the trouble with trying to do at least one head and at least one tail, if you're ever going to try and draw a tree diagram, is we're doing this n times. So we need to try and think of this kind of the flipped way around of thinking, OK, what are all the scenarios where he wouldn't get at least one head and at least one tail? And then we'll do one minus that. So the scenarios where it doesn't fit this would be all heads on the coin. And to get all heads, it would be a half multiply, not a half multiply, but a half to the power of n. That would be getting like every single time you did it, all n times, you get all heads. And the other way that you could do it that wouldn't fit this of getting at least one head and at least one tails would be getting all tails. And the probability of getting all tails is a half to the power of n. So these two things here, these are the only scenarios that don't fit what we're looking for. The only scenarios that don't fit getting one head and one tail. So what we'll do, we will say that the probability will be one minus getting all heads and getting all tails. There's no other way of doing this. You have to find this is all of the possible options and we've got rid of the one option that doesn't fit and the second option that doesn't fit, meaning that our answer to this question is one minus a half to the power of n minus a half to the power of n which is what we've got right here. And you would have just got a mark for just recognising a half to the power of n. I don't think many people would have got that question right. I think that question was really, really tough. So that's everything on probability with algebra. Probably some of the hardest questions, and like we had here, the only six mark question that I can find through doing this whole series of questions. And there's a lot of very tricky stuff here. If you did find this useful, please do like the video, share it with anyone who is studying for their GCSEs, and consider looking on the rest of my channel because I've got some other tutorials that might help you with some of these topics um, rather than just me going through exam questions. Good luck with all your studies.